Thank you so much. I'm sorry I missed my cue. Vinny tried to cue me and I was busy. And, but now I get to thank Vinny, who did all the heavy lifting. I think many of you worked closely with him and he deserves a tremendous amount of applause from us for his work. I'm sure you'll agree with me that having young people here throughout the weekend to share their stories with us has made this conference especially meaningful and inspirational. We'll be joined shortly by the, the last young person to share with us, uh, Jack and Draka, and I'm, it's, I'm sorry to say that he had a flight cancellation and is unable to make it in person, but fortunately, uh, given how technologically savvy he is, he will be joining us with some, so, somehow I can't really explain or understand, but it will happen. Um, we're gonna show you a brief video just to give you a glimpse into the life of this amazing young man. So when news broke last year that a test had been developed that might detect early pancreatic cancer, the research world not only took notice, it went into shock but the test hadn't been developed by some renowned cancer research institute, but by a boy wonder, a 15-year-old high school freshman named Jack Andreka. He then convinced an eminent cancer researcher to let him use his lab to develop his theory, all before he even had a license to drive. What, what occurred to you? Did you get hit over the head and have a dream about <laughs> what, what, what actually dawned on you? Well, what was happening? Essentially what I was doing is I was reading this scientific article kind of sneaking it under my desk and... We so you were goofing off like kids do by reading scientific articles, <laughs> yes. I know, I know high school freshmen, go ahead. And essentially what happened is we were learning about these things called antibodies, which is like a lock and key. It only reacts with one specific protein. In this case, a protein that's found in your bloodstream. <laughs> Don't patronize me, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> On Saturday, the 16-year-old Anne Arundel County High School junior was honored at the Vatican with an award given to young people whose work has made them role models. Jack, who's openly gay, says it was a watershed moment for him. This award means a lot simply for, because of where it's coming from the Vatican. I was never expected to be awarded from there. But also, it just shows how much the world has grown to accept people that are gay or LGBT. So it's really amazing. Through the internet, anything is possible. Theories can be shared, and you don't have to be a professor with multiple degrees to have your ideas valued. It's a neutral space where what you look like, age or gender, it doesn't matter. It's just your ideas that count. If a 15-year-old who didn't even know what a pancreas was could find a new way to attack pancreatic cancer. Just imagine what we all can do. Thank you. When Jack isn't doing CNN interviews or dis discovering new tests to, uh, for cancer, he's going to school and he's dealing with a lot of the usual teen stuff, including being an out gay teen in high school. And I want to acknowledge a, his true upstander at that school, his school counselor who's here with us today, Kristen Kreisha, if you want to stand and we'll acknowledge you. I know you're here. So just last September, I was chosen as one of the Out 100, and I just remember absolutely freaking out. Like, it was pretty much the face I had when I found out I had been ISA. And so, of course, I excitedly went to the homepage of the Out 100 and decided to look through all the past lists of these incredible individuals. However, I scrolled through this, and I had this sinking feeling in my stomach because for the past 18 years, there wasn't a single research scientist on the list. And it was really this feeling of isolation that defined my entire journey of coming out. And my story really began in seventh grade, when I was really beginning to understand and really grasping my sexuality. And I went to this tiny charter school of 300 and specialized in sciences, and was pretty much a dream 
true for the kind of nerdy kid that I was. However, one of the problems at the school that made it really difficult for me to come out was that you were stuck with the same 24 kids for all three years of middle school. And that meant that you learned that once you formed an identity, that that really sucked you and you couldn't get rid of it. And also, only having 24 classmates, you'd find yourself, if you just displease like five kids, then you'd find yourself eating lunch alone, which I found myself doing a lot rather often in seventh grade, and you become the butt of endless jokes. But one other major problem that made the environment particularly hostile towards LGBT youth was the teacher. The vast majority of you were deeply religious on these very conservative views. And I vividly remember at one moment in middle school when my math teacher yelled at me saying, what are you, gay? And because of this environment, I decided to make a decision that I will always regret. I decided to decide who I truly was and try to create this facade of someone that I just completely, that wasn't me. And because of this, I think it's deep and dark depression in seventh grade and the beginning of eighth grade, often ending up cutting my wrists and contemplating suicide. And the only place that I really felt I truly belonged was at these really quirky math camps and science fairs, because of these places, I was at least free from the fake identity I had crafted myself. But most importantly, I loved science and math, and I was around other kids that loved science and math. I would literally just spend endless hours learning these obscure math formulas and burying my nose in science textbooks and doing these weird esoteric experiments because math problems and data don't discriminate against you and it doesn't matter who you are when you discover a new finding. Characteristics such as your sexuality didn't matter in the scientific field really. However, while these camps then math and science fairs offered a brief respite from the quote that was my school, I still felt really isolated at them because, once again, there wasn't a single out LGBT person at these events. And this feeling of isolation was further amplified, really, by the media's portrayal of the LGBT community and common stereotypes that dictate that if you were gay, you had to become a fashion, you had to have this amazing fashion sense to become an actor and interior designer. And if you know me, I have zero fashion sense. However, eventually, in eighth grade, I don't even know why I decided to do it, I, on the spur of a moment, I came out in one of the most wimpy ways of coming out. I texted my friend Logan late one night, and I said, hey, Logan, I'm gay. Can you tell everyone for me? And, and so what happened is the next day, apparently everyone knew, except for my parents. What happened is my Logan told my friends, who told eventually everyone, and everyone eventually told their parents. And some parents eventually told my parents. And it was a really interesting conversation that we had at the dinner table that night. My parents were just like, so we heard something really interesting at school today. But eventually I kind of acclimated and got really comfortable with my sexuality at my school. But still out of a class of 300, I was still really the only out LGBT person there. And but feeling still carried on into ninth grade and even high school, where really I didn't know any LGBT youth that are my age, or, and really I don't see any big LGBT, LGBT media figures in science, that I have Alan Turing, but he's dead. And I think that one of the biggest things that helped me was my school counselor, Miss Kreisha, who I believe is in the audience right now. Miss Kreisha, you there stand up. And what really helped me with her is that she would step me throughout the process and whenever I would have a problem, I could go to my school counselor and really just talk it out with her. And I kind of go about these issues in a really scientific way. I like go through all these experiments, psychological experiments, and 
she'd always laugh at me for overthinking things, and she still like laughs at me for overthinking things. I'll go into her room and wonder like for two hours, agonizing whether or not putting a winky face or a smiley face will be good or bad for when I'm texting my boyfriend. But what was what I think is a really painful motive that we have to realize here is that there has to be this open dialogue between LGBT youth at the school and the counselor where the youth know that they can go to the counselor to freely express themselves. I know I can do that with this pressure because oftentimes I don't feel like going to class and end up in the room and we have these long, thorough conversations. But um, that might not be the case with a lot of students. I really think that connecting with the students makes sure that every student knows that they do have a safe spot to discuss their problem issues with the school counselor is really critical. And one last thing that I really want to highlight in the LGBT community is really making more than just a fashion designer, interior designer, um, career option, really showing that there's more beyond that, and that your sexuality doesn't define your future, you define your future, and that you have the power to do whatever you want. And so hopefully through this, we'll have more happy LGBT youth and more LGBTs and more fields. So thank you for listening to me and best of time at the conference.